When I do folk music for you, I do a concert, it's not only music, but I tell you some stories too, because over the years I've been able to not only study the lives of great folk singers, and some not so great, some are rather a bit ignoble perhaps even, but I've also been able to perform with some of them, get to know them personally a bit, and I try to offer you insights into what the folk singer is really like. Then also, it's one of those things that in my real life, my day job, I end up teaching psychology. And in teaching psychology, I deal with human behavior. And so I approach the folk singer in terms of what the songs, the lyrics, the message, and the music will be in terms of bringing meaning to people's lives. And likewise, I try to give you an idea about the psychology of music, what effects it will have for you, perhaps, to enrich your life, to help you understand the culture you grew up in, or to better yet, to understand the cultures of other people, because certainly we're in a multicultural society today. Now, what I'll be doing is tracing the evolution of American folk music, roughly from the early 1900s on up to the present day. You're going to hear some songs you know, a few maybe you're not too familiar with, but by the time you leave you'll know them. And as I said earlier, I want you to sing along with me because folk music is to be shared with each other. You're going to hear songs by such artists as, oh let's see, let's start with Woody Guthrie, or maybe we can go to Burl Ives, who was one of my favorites because I got a chance to work with him some. And then of course we had son Arlo Guthrie, we had John Denver, we had Peter, Paul, and Mary, we had Hank Williams, who you may think of as a country singer, but a lot of his music is very much southern blues translated into the country western genre. And let's see, who have I left out now? Maybe Jim Croce as a modern day singer who offered us some what I would refer to as urban folk music. So what is modern American folk music? Well, it captures values and beliefs of people and talks about events as well. One of the common things in American folk music is that it serves many sociological purposes. It talks about people, the struggles they have, the opportunities they have, the unfulfilled needs that they have, and historically it's always had some kind of linkage to political thought. Back in, oh, when was it, the 1700s, when the American Revolution was coming about, the folk singers with broadsides such as in Boston would bring the news to the people with folk songs. And then up through the ages we've always had, well, let's take Woody Guthrie, a connection between not only politics, such as in Woody Guthrie's case, perhaps socialism, but he was very concerned about the American worker, the conditions imposed upon the blue collar worker. And so then in the 1960s we had a rebirth of political folk songs with the likes of Bob Dylan and Peter, Paul, and Mary. I can still remember attending a march on Washington where Peter, Paul, and Mary were on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, and behind them were Martin Luther King, Jr., Coretta Scott King. And so what Peter, Paul, and Mary sang that has become now kind of the national anthem for the social revolution was Blowing in the Wind. And we'll do a little bit of that before the day's over. Early on, folk singers were characterized as being wanderers. They would go about the countryside, singing their songs, telling their stories, in hopes of getting a meal or a handout of some kind. And oftentimes it took on a rather sad, lamenting tune. Like, I'm just a poor, wayfaring stranger. I'm traveling through this world of woe. And there's no sickness, no toil, no danger in that fair land to which I go. And in some cases, their wandering actually brought good spirits to them. And incidentally, or parenthetically, one of the things about folk songs is you always change the words a little bit. And so here we have a little bit in honor of our great state of Nebraska. Well, on a summer day in the month of May, a burly farmer went hiking down a shady lane through the sugar cane. He was looking for his liking. As he strolled along, he sang a song of the land of the milk and honey, where a farmer can stay for many a day, and he won't need any money. Oh, the buzzing of the bees and the yogurt trees and the soda water fountain, where the lemonade springs and the bluebird sings on the big rock candy mountain. 
So when we came to the 1930s, the wandering troubadour was certainly much in presence, particularly a fellow named Woody Guthrie. And Woody Guthrie traveled particularly through the Dust Bowl and the crop fields of California, and he became very much interested, as I mentioned earlier, in the American worker, and then later on he became very much interested in the political scene. In fact, in the 1950s, when Joe McCarthy was doing the famed uh, witch hunts, looking for communists under every rock, the Woody Guthrie music was really suspect in terms of was it anti-American. But at the same time, in keeping with what America is all about, Woody Guthrie offered us a song, one that is probably as close to our hearts as it can be, and it goes like this. This land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the New York Islands, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream. Peter, Paul, and Mary were not all gloom and doom, and they were not all political commentary. Indeed, they have given us a song that I'll bet you your children, your grandchildren, and certainly you know, and it is, Puff the Magic Dragon lives by the sea and frolics in the autumn mist in a land called Honolulu. Little Jackie Paper Love that rascal puff and brought in strings and sealing wax and other fancy stuff. So at the end of the 1960s, the so-called peace movement or social revolution was coming to an end. The era of Richard Nixon had arrived with all of the vicissitudes it uh, has put into the American fabric. And there was a singer who came on the scene in the early 1970s, and I was delighted that later I got to perform with him, know a bit about him, and I'll tell you about him if we ever have a concert together. And he does a song that goes like this, and in keeping with the idea of we can change the lyrics, because this is folk music. Almost heaven, old Nebraska, from the sand hills to the Niagara River. Life is old. See, younger than the prairie, growing in the breeze, country roads, take me home to the place I belong, it's old Nebraska, prairie mama, take me home, down country roads, John Denver, of course. In the late 1960s, early 70s, we were fortunate to have a singer named Jim Croce who came out of Philadelphia. And though Croce may seem like the last choice for being a folk singer, in point of fact, he's told people that he was raised on country western, on folk music, particularly Appalachian folk. So a Croce song that I think is an excellent example of urban folk music and very modern American folk music is on the south side of Chicago, it's the baddest part of town. And if you go down there, you best beware of a man called Leroy Brown. Now Leroy, he is more than trouble. You see, he stands about six foot four. And all the downtown ladies call him treetop love. And the men just call him sir. Now you sing he's bad, bad. Leroy Brown, the baddest man in the whole darn town, badder than old King Kong, meaner than a junkyard dog. So I hope you've enjoyed the songs and the stories that I've offered to you today, and I hope we'll have some time together in the not-too-distant future. If you're interested in having me pack up my guitar and banjo and a few other instruments along with it, and head your way to do a concert and tell you about the folks I've known through the years, then why don't you get in touch with me? Until I do see you, take care of yourself, stay healthy, stay safe. Bye-bye.